Hi everyone, today I want to continue my all about greens and all about purple videos and tackle another important color group in my painting process, earth colors or brown colors. Earth color refers to watercolors that are made from earth pigments like sienna, amber or ochre. The pigments are often heated to different degrees or through different methods, so they come in many different forms like raw or burnt sienna, raw or burnt amber. That's why you often find the same pigment number like PBR7, pigment brown 7, with many different colors. So I gathered all the earth colors or earth pigments I own in my watercolor collection and swatched them in my big watercolor book I keep for swatches and mixes. First up we have yellow ochre. As mentioned, earth pigments come in different variations and ochre has so many different versions. Yellow ochre is probably the best known color. It is generally opaque and made from either pigment yellow 42 or 43. I like this color for mixing skin tones. Gold brown isn't a single pigment brown color, but it has the brown pigment PBR41 in it, which is an earth pigment. Through the yellow in the mix, it is a very light to almost golden brown. Next up I have two burnt siennas from different brands. On the bottom we have Schmincke's burnt sienna, which is made from the pigment PR101, which is transparent red iron oxide. On the contrary, Daniel Smith's burnt sienna is made from the earth pigment natural iron oxide, PBR7, which depending on how it's processed turns into natural or burnt sienna or even amber. It's granulating and very rich in color. Burnt Umber is also made from the same pigment, PBR7, but through a different process it turns into this deeper brown color. The one I have here is from Schmincke and non-granulating and semi-transparent. Schmincke's mahogany brown is made from PBR33, zinc iron chromite, also called walnut brown. Mars brown or iron oxide is made through the brown pigment, PBR6, iron oxide. It's a granulating warm dark brown that I personally like very much, so I put it on my main palette. Daniel Smith Transparent Red Oxide, made from PR101, is true to its name, because as mentioned before the red pigment 101 is synthetic red iron oxide. It's a heavily granulating intense reddish brown. Schmincke's English Venetian Red, similar to Indian Red, is also made from the red iron oxide pigment PR101, but it's very opaque, with a more muted red undertone. I included sepia brown here as well, as they have earth pigments mixed into them and are brown colors. They are darker than burnt umber and have the black pigment PBK9 in it. Traditionally, the color comes from cuttlefish, but today they are produced synthetically. Lastly, I included Van Dyke Brown, which ironically is the first brown watercolor I ever bought for myself. It also has PBR7 included as sepia and a black pigment PBK7, but it's a bit more greenish than sepia brown. These are all my earth colors I own so far. I do have essential earth pigments like yellow ochre, a true burnt sienna and burnt umber in my collection, but I definitely want to expand my range with colors like raw umber or raw sienna, as I'm still missing the raw variants of most of these earth pigments. Lastly, as a little comparison, I swatched burnt sienna made from PBR7, burnt sienna made from PR101, a transparent sienna made from PR101 next to each other to show how these similar colors still behave very differently. I personally always have trouble to decide which one of these three I prefer. I think it comes down to the transparency and the granulation effect. Pre-made watercolor palettes usually include two earth pigments like ochre or sienna. Burnt sienna for example is great for mixing neutral grays with blue or mixed with yellow it can yield a wide range of skin tones. But because these earth pigments can sometimes be difficult to work with, especially for beginners, because of the different granulation effects or opaqueness, I have explored different ways to mix these brown shades. The general rule of thumb is to mix complementary colors or close to complementary. So one way to get brown is to mix purple and yellow. I've included orange in this color chart as well, as it also gives a nice range of browns when mixed with purple. 
Depending on how much purple you mix with the yellow or orange, you get a range from light golden browns to burnt sienna to burnt umber. Some of these mixtures are very lovely, especially the more intense purples like perylene violet or mauve mixed with orange. As ultramarine violet leans more towards blue than violet, the mixes with yellow are greenish, whereas the mix with orange results in very nice browns. That's because blue and orange are complementary colors. Using purple and yellow to mix brown is not my go-to way to mix browns, but I was generally surprised what lovely brown shades can result through this. So, another way to mix browns or neutral shades and my commonly used method is to use blue and orange. I selected a few of my favorite blues and my main orange here. The resulting mixes range from a light reddish brown to darker browns. Blues and at least one orange is typically included in most watercolor palettes, so it's a great way to mix browns or even use burnt sienna, which has an orange to red undertone, mixed with blue to get neutral grays. It's such a versatile combo. My favorite mix, and I've mentioned this before in my videos, probably too often, is PB60 and PO71. You can get browns to neutral grays or even black with this combination, so I always include both of these colors in my mixing palette. Lastly, we have the complementary colors green and red. This is quite new to me as well, as I've never tried this combo before to mix browns. I selected a few greens that I have in my collection and included orange as well to see if I can get different lighter browns with this when mixed with green. I was pleasantly surprised by these mixes to be honest. Depending on which green we mix with red, we get very intense browns and some of them resemble Venetian or Indian red. Some of the mixes looked like umber or sepia. My favorite mix here is definitely PG7, Thalo Green and Pyrus Scarlet. As I always have phthalo green and a warm red on my mixing palette, and I've never used this combo to mix browns before. This exercise definitely opened my eyes to new possibilities in watercolor mixing. So, this is the entire earth color mixing chart. I really enjoy these kind of exercises, as it helps me improve my watercolor mixing and tests my general knowledge of color theory. When I started out with watercolors, I always used pre-mixed browns in my paintings. But with time, I experimented more with different colors and realized the advantages of mixing your own colors, like browns. For example, when I paint portraits, sometimes I'd like the brown hair to have different undertones to blend better with the background. I suggest trying out different earth tones and brown mixes to test for yourself what you prefer. I hope this video could be helpful or interesting to you in any way. I really enjoy exploring new colors or color mixes, so let me know what group of color I should tackle next. As always, thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!